All right, welcome back to the For You podcast. Um, this is absolutely going to go down as my favorite episode of all time. Um, <laughs> we have Mr. Faze Blaze. Uh, how What's are up, you guys? How are no, you? I'm good. I'm good. I'm doing good. I just got done streaming. Mm-hmm. I'm pleasure to be here, bro. Pleasure to be here. We're we're happy to have you. I, everyone would kept hitting me up. I posted a TikTok um, about the first time I hit you up, and everyone. I was getting Snapchats, I was getting TikTok DMs, Instagram DMs, all this stuff. Just, are we gonna get Blaze on the podcast? And I haven't told anyone, but it's ha- it's happening. So, this is crazy. Yeah, uh, bro. Yeah. Yeah, I, I just want to jump it, jump right in. Uh, you lived in Austria, correct? Yeah. Uh, how was that like with the experience of the culture? Is is there a culture difference, and how much is that? Compared. Oh, yeah, bro. Oh, yeah, bro. I mean, I always break it down to people pretty simply. I mean, let me let me just kind of start at the beginning. In Europe, I feel like a lot of people are very comfortable just, just doing a kind of a nine to five and, and living a very normal life in America. I feel like people are more inclined to chase their dreams. I don't know. It's just, it's like, it's it, Europe is very laid back. Europe is very like real, like people in Europe, at least where I'm from in Europe, in Austria, um, people don't really like hide their emotions. Like in America, a lot of times I feel like people will, will, you know, I don't know, they just, they, they just won't fully be real with you or they just won't, you know, I always give an example. I went to recently when I went back to Austria, I went to go get some coffee and like one of the workers, like she was clearly not having a good day and she was just like not having it with everybody and she was just like not in a good mood and she was like clearly showing that. And in like America, like you would never see that, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. That's it it almost but I would but I would sorry, sorry to No, you're good. Break it down to in America people really like just go for their dreams and, and just go for all kinds of crazy stuff make stuff happen in the business world or in entertainment whatever it may be and in europe i feel like people are a little bit more laid back more comfortable kind of just going nine to fives and and living lives with their family Mm -hmm. i don't know it it almost makes sense from a like stereotypical standpoint with everyone saying the american dream and everything like that that almost like kind of proves that like people here i mean it's real it's it's people really like have dreams out here and and really try to make them happen you know what i'm saying yeah it's like if you if you like and that's why you know when i look at the creator space out here in america like so many people are creators and so many people are like aspiring creators like young people even watching this like they might want to be a youtuber a streamer one day whatever it may be in europe you don't really have that and you don't Mm -hmm. have like the support behind that too it'd be kind of a crazy thing being like all right i'm gonna become a youtuber or whatever um and it's still not fully like accepted and like all around the world even in america if you're like yeah i'm gonna start being a youtuber as it like you know a kid a teenager in high school you know people are starting to understand that it's like okay you can really do some shit but in europe it's still like not really like that which is why you don't have as many like creators out there as 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 here you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. yeah uh when you you joined phase and you, like everyone else, were a um, a phase fan, uh, and I know you got recruited in the call with Red Random, uh, which is he's uh, another person who's you know skyrocketed. Um, how uh, how can you explain in words the uh, the feeling of grinding for something that huge and then that paying off? Dude, I mean it's like it's it's everything. It's like you having an, you having the wildest dream ever, and then that somehow coming true. You know what I'm saying? It's mm-hmm. like at the time, bro. I think I said it in my, or I said something like this in the in one of the Phase Five videos that they posted. But at the time, bro, like joining Phase, like there was not a single thing that was doper to me in the entire world. Like you could have been like, all right, Lucas, you want to be president? I'm like, nah, I want to, I want to be in Phase Clan, like. Like Lucas, you wanna, you wanna be a millionaire and sail on a yacht around the world? Like, nah, I wanna be in Phase Clan. Like, that's all I fucking wanted to do. I thought that was the, the coolest thing in the world, and and I thought at the at the time I thought that it was so impossible, bro. I thought that it was so 
like ridiculous to even like join this. You know what I'm saying? Because I was into the scene, I understood everything. But it's like it's like you start thinking it's impossible, but then you realize like, damn, if I really you know, kind of do something and I really put in the effort, you know, over time that could that might actually lead to me joining the team. And if not that team, you know, maybe a different team or you know. I don't know, but that's that's really phase just really inspired like the work ethic and like the motivation behind what I do, and it's just 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 wanted and and just to sum it all up, at the time I just thought phase was the coolest thing in the world. Like I just wanted to be a part of it so bad. Such a fan, dude. Yeah, it's it was seeing you back in uh, when you moved out into the New York house. It was it was almost like uh, it was hope, like seeing someone. Because a lot of those people were like kind of grandfathered in, um, like they had been in for a long time, and seeing someone new and younger, uh, it it kind of gave like a refreshing and like hope feeling that there was possible. And then now with the phase five, it seems like m- more of a realistic thing for people. So it's it's really cool to see that you guys are yeah, still. Yeah, I've 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 never heard that that perspective before i appreciate it yeah and i just think because i i feel like i mean a lot of people were fans but like apex joined you know when when the team wasn't what it was and he kind of helped make it what it was and um it's kind of like different points of joining for a lot of people and i mean i don't i don't know how you guys felt about it but like seeing how it's become you know the biggest brand in esports and um it's like surreal to to see even all these people like ben simmons who like from the nba and Bronny and all these people getting into it is there anyone that has actually ever like starstruck you that has showed interest in phase um yeah bro i mean yeah a lot of people um, just one that I can think of off the top of my head was like the way back in the day was like schoolboy Q. Like mm-hmm. I was, uh, you, know, you know, from an early age, I, I, I admired the fuck out of, out of musicians, especially rappers. Cause it was like hip hop was, was my favorite genre and my favorite kind of music that I was listening to at the time. And schoolboy Q was one of my favorite rappers. And, um, I had a poster of him in like my room and stuff too. And like one day he just randomly followed me and he like hit me up to play COD. This is Black Ops 3. Excuse me. <laughs> um, and I was, I was tripping. I was tripping. Atiko was the only one who like kind of witnessed my reaction, but I was literally like jumping up and down like geeking out. I thought that was the coolest thing in the world. I was like, damn, it's cool. Like, who knows who I am? And it's like, you know, it's, 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 it's really cool, bro. It's, and there's been other people too. I'm, I'm, I'm really trying to think, like hard. Can I? Can start start by. Can I maybe say yeah, one that possibly? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go for um, it. Go for it. Go for kind it. of what, what actually sh- was crazy to me was, because not a lot of people showed interest in the gaming scene, but like when, when Logic went to the New York house, that oh, was. Oh yeah, I mean that was that was. That's. Awesome. I can't even believe I forgot Logic. Yeah, yeah that that's was, that was insane. That's the craziest thing that I've ever seen. Like, my my friend is like the biggest Logic fan, and he was he kind of showed me Phase and and like seeing all this come together, like two worlds collide, pretty much. It, and it had nothing to do with me at all, but I was still like, "Oh, how does this happen?" And then now we're yeah, that 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 was crazy. Logic's the fucking man too, by the way. Like he's super, super dope, super dope guy, super nice, super down to earth, super like engaging. Like he talked to me, like wants to like know about you, and so, I don't know. He's just he's just he's the, he's the man. Every time I met him, he's been like a one. Yeah, that's crazy. Logic Logic is the man. Um, at, at your level of um kind of i don't i don't want to put words in your mouth but i i is you're you're a big creator you have influence in in the scene um is there room for someone uh of of that stature to to have uh an inspiration uh because like i i inspire to have a work ethic of like you and a lot of your peers um like uh phase rug who is a nonstop go machine and like the YouTube king at this point. Um, it, are there people that still inspire you 
to work harder every day? Yeah, bro. Yeah, bro. I mean, I mean, to be completely honest with you, I really don't give a fuck about like numbers or like what a person's influences, quote unquote. Although yeah. I do admire and respect it, especially if they have a great influence and they're like doing good work. Like that's that's awesome. And like I, I obviously I respect somebody a lot more for that. But something at the end of the day that really just inspires me is 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 what people create. Like it doesn't matter if you're on TikTok or YouTube or Facebook or Twitter or Instagram or TV or none of the above or you create music and it doesn't matter how big you are. Like you could have zero followers. Like if you make something that I think is dope, like I'm I'm gonna like I'm gonna think you're dope and I'm probably gonna get inspired by that too, you know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. it's, it's 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 really just what people create. It's really just all creations that, that really get me inspired. And people too, yeah, people. Um, dude, fucking, this is like going off on a tangent, but yo, TikTok is like the littest shit ever. It's so, so dope. Like, I've met so many awesome creators through that platform, and like, I've, I've gained such a, a greater respect for uh, cr- creators in general because of the platform TikTok. Like, I've, 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 be- like, I've seen people like blow up on TikTok and then trying to, bring that over to YouTube and then use their creativity and bring it into their YouTube content. And now all of a sudden they made these amazing TikTok videos and now they're making YouTube videos and making long YouTube videos with the same themes and the same ideas and the same. And it's just, I don't know. It's super, super cool. I love that platform. It's fucking dope. I I I had to say that. No, you're good. I I think it's crazy that I I'm sitting there with my girlfriend and I'm, I'm looking over her shoulder and I see, like you on her for you page and it's just (laughs) it's like the craziest thing ever because i I mean she doesn't really know a lot about the space and i don't expect her to but it's just it's crazy to see it was a tiktok with like you and your girlfriend or something i was like that i I, i'm trying to like get this guy on my podcast and she's like what like and then she like went to your thing and like it's just crazy on how that platform works at all like it's so sick it's so it's so crazy it's it's my girlfriend's actually the one that got me into it she was she was into it like way before like people like early early really early and she kept telling me to get on it she didn't even really like grind it grind it or or, like yeah but she was still on it she just like knew about it she just always told me to get on it at the beginning of this year i just like i just downloaded it and i just i thought it was so i don't know it's such a it's so dope. It's so it's such good content. And I got kind of involved in the community and made some friends. And then I'm just like, all right, I'll just make some videos. And just got into it for a little while. I haven't posted or been consistent on it since I've started grinding Twitch, really. But it's it's cool. I like it. How important do you think that is to when a new? Pl- oh, dude, it's it's so important. I'm sorry. Ask your question. Uh, I'm not, no, I don't- you good. Um, like to innovate and re. Uh, not necessarily reimagine your content because you can bring that same energy over, but even put the effort into a new platform. Like how important is that to stay not necessarily relevant, but in, in kind of ups with the times. I think, I think there's just a huge power in TikTok that people or that the majority of people haven't fully realized yet. And it's that they have such a massive viewer base and like not, the biggest content creator base you know what i'm saying like yeah new platform it's it became super fucking popular like super super fast and and it has so many viewers it has so many users you know what i'm saying and there's constantly like new tiktokers like left and right with like millions and millions of followers and it's because there's not you know there's not that base yet there's not that it's it's still a, a new platform and it's like if you are able to correctly um, portray your brand on the platform, whether it's a company or clothing line, or you're a gamer, or you're somebody who does a podcast, or whatever it is. If you're able to properly portray that with content, and you do it consistently enough, and you 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 maybe do some collabs, and you kind of you feed into the system, you play the game a little bit, it it can have such a, a positive impact on the other important social media platforms that you grind, such as YouTube or Twitch. Or if you're really trying to grow like an Instagram or Twitter, you know what I'm saying? Like TikTok can be like f- like food for that. It can it can be an incredible driver because there's just this whole new fan base. It's like I always explain it to people. It's like imagine like 10, 11, 13-year-olds who just got an iPhone like 
this is their first time on the internet. Like, they got TikTok and they got addicted to TikTok and like they just that's their universe. That's how they start on the internet, kind of with TikTok. You know what I'm saying? It's like if you can get in there and you can you can you can you can teach the people some, you can entertain the people, you can consistently push content, you can easily blow up on the platform. But then more importantly, you can you can you're able to 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 contribute to all of your other platforms um, because of TikTok. Just just kind of bringing people over. You see a lot of the the Twitch streamers who are doing work on TikTok. Mm-hmm. Um, like Lucci and Berger and, and Stan, some of the other people that you've had on the show, they always go live on TikTok. They always, they always, um, as they're gaming, they go live and they try to bring some of their TikTok audience over to their Twitch. And mm-hmm. they do very well by doing that, by going live and, and, and by posting content that redirects people to their Twitch. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. That's just an example, but, but here in our gaming world, but yeah, dude, it's sick, bro. It's, it's a, it's a dope platform, and I think, and I highly encourage any aspiring creators out there to, to to really get on TikTok and and just invest some time into the platform, understand the platform, um, look at some of the other gaming content creators out there who are doing it and doing it right, and and see if you can do it too. See if it's something that you're interested in. If it is, just grind it. It's so it can be so powerful. It can be so dope. One of the things early on TikTok that um, I was nervous about. Um, with these Twitch streamers and creators uh, was the if they were going to be able to convert. Um, because we saw with Vine that only a small percentage of people could actually convert their Vine um, audience to uh, YouTube when everything shut down. And w- th- those who did really succeeded, like the David Dobrik and Logan Paul, those types of people, um, but I was really nervous for all these people who had a large audiences on TikTok if they were going to convert well or at all. And I think, you know, the Luchis, the the Stans, and those guys, they converted flawlessly, and they are yeah, absolutely they're, they're killing doing, it. They're doing a good job. They're doing a good job. They're doing mm-hmm. a good job. Um, I think the opportunity to convert to convert on TikTok is massive. I yeah, think people are just starting to figure out how to really do it. Luchi did an excellent job and is still doing an excellent job of of converting to tiktok followers to youtube to subscribers yeah to there's a couple of pieces that he made where he just saw you know a lot of subs coming in off those contest pieces specifically and i think it's stuff like that if you do that more it, it, it it'll have a you know enormous you know lucha keeps on grounding tiktok he keeps on doing his thing and he keeps he keeps posting YouTube consistently. He'll be at a million subscribers in no time. I mean, he just hit like two hundred thousand subscribers uh, within like two months. You know what I'm saying? And that's really that's that's t- TikTok pushing. It's like YouTube realizes that too. If YouTube realizes like that that you're somehow bringing in a bunch of subscribers off a different platform, you know what I'm saying? Like they they won't necessarily push your videos, but like they'll 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 push your channel. Like 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 mm-hmm. we'll just gain more subs. Like it's it's. I don't know. It's it's crazy on um, just the sheer amount of people that a, a one TikTok can reach. Like those numbers mm-hmm. absolutely blow my mind sometimes, mm-hmm. and and the algorithm on that thing is absolutely crazy. It's something that I that no other platform can emulate at all. Yeah, it's 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 they really killed it with that platform. They really 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 knocked it out of the park. I, I don't think people give TikTok enough credit for, for like compared to the other social media platforms, like how hard they killed that social aspect of it. Like the way, how seamlessly you're able to like duet people, um, share videos, use people's audio. Like if I posted a video right now, like anybody could use that exact audio from that video and that audio could go viral. You know, so it's like, yeah. it's, it's, it's crazy how well their platform is put together and it's, it's another really interesting thing is like the music industry, bro. Like TikTok has such a profound effect on the music industry. Like you see all of like the charting songs on Billboard. It's all music that, that's coming off of TikTok. You know what I'm saying? And and it just shows you how how powerful that platform can be for one business and how it's slowly becoming powerful for other businesses. Like gaming is a new trend on TikTok. Yeah. Right? Gaming is gaming is new, bro. And you gotta understand that when gaming is new somewhere, like, and you're a gamer, like, and you're in this space, like, you just gotta, 
you just gotta get into it and try it because gaming is only growing. Like, yeah. only seeing the cusp of everything. You know what I'm saying? It's like, you think there's a lot of gamers now? Five years from now, there's gonna be ten times as many gamers. You know what I'm saying? Maybe even more. Like, who knows? Ten years from now, Jesus Christ. You know what I'm saying? Like, the waves and waves of millions and millions of new people coming into the internet every year, young people and people who, you know, haven't just really gotten into it, kind of just get into it a little bit later in life. Mm -hmm. Like, massive, bro. Every year, every year. Well, it's, it's, or go ahead, go ahead. And I just want to say that just because I've been on the internet for a long time. Like, I literally see this. Like, I literally, Mm -hmm. and it's, it's, and it's, and it's just encouraging to know because it's like, if you're, if you are an aspiring creator, it's like, like this is perfect time to get into it. It's like it's 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 great. Even if you have a hundred followers, a hundred subscribers, like you're in a great spot if you just stay on a grind and stay consistent. Like, like everything will happen for you. Like, because because this everything around us is only going up. Like it's crazy. Well, I I was just gonna say that even I'm sure when you started, um, when when did you when do you think you started with? Cause you you started you started XJMX correct, like way yeah, back exactly. way back in the day. Um, I yeah that's that's really the first regular consistent content pieces that I posted. Okay, and when what um, year was that? Ah oh, shoot, man, gotta be like twenty twelve maybe. Okay, so twenty twelve, the gaming scene in twenty twelve. Um compared to now i i think if we had a chart right now that it would uh, it would considered normalized more when fortnite came out because it seemed like when fortnite came out that everyone was playing games but like before that you know i got made fun of a little bit for posting youtube videos or whatever whoever found it um and I'm sure a lot of people did because it was like, oh, you play video games. There's a stigma around video games. W- what are your thoughts? Did did anything like that ever happen to you or or anything? Um, I mean, I mean, yeah, totally. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's everyone. Nobody got it, bro. Like nobody got it. Like not the family, not like the homies, bro. And that's why you, I never talked about it. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like you said, it wasn't as normalized as it is now. Um. Um, so yeah, I mean, I've, 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 I've had plenty of experiences like that. Um, especially, you know, in the home life. At the end of the day, my parents were always like really supportive of what I did, but they didn't get it. Like they didn't get it. Yeah. Until I mean, when he came in, like they didn't get it. And they, I always had like, you know, some sort of pushback. So, but it's all gravy. I, it's it, like, I feel like now, do you understand why that was it? Like, do you understand why they would not i mean yeah i mean i mean they yeah i mean i didn't even know what the fuck i was doing, yeah you know I, mean? I, didn't, I didn't i didn't think that this would lead to a career bro like i just wanted to be in phase and play video games that's literally it like, that's, that's, but that's it. but don't you think and that that's why things work like people a lot of people now start video games because they see this lavish life and they want the money and stuff but i don't think a lot of at least you guys started for money at all like i don't think that was in mind you just like playing video games no, and that's no. that's why i started no. as well yeah i mean it, it really it you know to answer kind of your question or what you're getting at yeah i think i think to be honest like when something is organic and when it's just truly passion like that's when the best stuff gets created that's when like you're 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 doing the best we oh i was talking about um how people who start this for money and kind of have the wrong train of thought and that people who started earlier um kind of produce content out of passion and it really shines through yeah i mean I mean, to be completely honest with you, I think that that when you create out of passion, or not even just creating, but just just anything you do in life, when it's out of passion, I think it really brings out the best in you. Like, for example, like if you're an athlete and if you're like truly, truly passionate about the sport, you're gonna be like the best that you possibly could or ever would 
versus if you weren't totally into that sport. You know what I'm saying? It's not going to bring out that true potential in you. So I think if you're doing something organically and passionately, like how I did when I came up and when I made YouTube content, um, it, it wasn't about the money. It was just strictly like I just love playing video games and I love making YouTube videos. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, and that was my motivation. And because of that, I made the best content that I knew how. And I really feel like, and even looking back at the videos now, I'm like, I'm like, it might not have been the most high quality videos or whatever, but at the time, those were the best videos that I could make and those are bangers and I'm like hella proud of those videos, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But I will say, it doesn't really matter what your motivation is. Like, it, it doesn't matter. If, you, if your motivation is solely, like if you're motivated solely out of passion, that's awesome and you will create awesome content and you will probably be super proud with it. But if you're also just motivated by money, like that's fine, like that's not, like I don't look down on a creator that is motivated solely by money. If anything, I'm intrigued and I respect it because uh, to a certain degree, um, they're more consistent than creators who are who are who who only do stuff out of passion because people who only use stuff out of passion, they might stop doing it, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm a great example of that, you know what I'm saying? Like I take breaks making YouTube videos because I don't look at it as the greatest monetary gain, which it, it is and can be, but I just, do it out of fun, you know what I'm saying? I just, I just do it because I, I love it, or maybe I don't, you know what I'm saying? Maybe I'm not passionate about that right now. I do other things, like I stream video games. But people, for example, who um, are motivated by money, they are sometimes more consistent. That's, that's all I'm getting at. And at the end of the day, that's really just what matters. If you're a social media creator, like for yourself and for your fans as well, it just matters that you're consistent and that you just, you just post and that you're there for them, you know what I'm saying? Because that'll help. That'll help you, obviously. That'll help your business. That'll help you stay busy and, and be happy and be continue being passionate, whatever. And and also it'll it'll it's important for your fans. You know what I'm saying? Like there's people out there who like really fuck with you and like would really like to you know see stuff from you and 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 even if it's just a couple people. You know what I'm saying? You you should be there for them. It's not the most important thing in the world. Obviously, there's more important things in your life than that. And you got responsibilities and stuff you got to take care of. But but it's 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 important it's it's important it's it's part of being a creator yeah <laughs> i i've never honestly looked at it that way and i think that is a not only an interesting perspective i think it's very very valuable and i think that's that's a really good point um cuz i always thought that if people started it um motivated by money that it wouldn't if the money didn't come right away, which it doesn't, and it, it, I mean, in the very few cases it doesn't, for me it didn't, and it's still not exactly where someone would be proud of it, but I don't, I don't care about money at all. I just like doing it, and I, I, I value these conversations on a podcast, especially with someone like you, um, very heavily. And, and that's my motivation is to kind of gain knowledge. It's these are more selfish than anything is because I personally get to talk to FaZe Blaze, for example, you know. Um, yeah, but it's I, I think I think that's a really good point. Uh, you, you said uh, when you go back and watch videos, do you do you do that from time to time? Um, you know, yeah, from, from time to time, from time to time. It's like it's like uh it's like it's like phases i guess i would say how Every now and then i just watch, watch a couple and, and you know what I'm saying. how far back are we talking like obey blaziken red blaziken dude i mean yeah random stuff it's not too much like the the gaming content to be honest like i don't i mm -hmm. don't i don't really check on the gaming stuff but it's like it's random moments it's random stuff that really like stands out to me and it mm -hmm. might not even stand out to anybody else but it's just like i don't know and it'll be like random montage and stuff too like yeah like i don't you know like and I'll, I'll go through like old camera rolls and like that kind of stuff but mm -hmm. but for, for for the most part when i look back at like gaming i don't really look back at myself like i look i look back at other like moments i don't know i look back at a lot of old phase montages i think like phase one million montage that's something i go back to a lot um okay dope. It, it gets me motivated and uh i think that one's really it's a really good one um yeah, I was I was gonna say, uh, like going back. I think you have a really um, great beginning 
uh, I think is very motivating to see. Uh, if you go back and watch one of Blaze's old setup tours, uh, you used to have a setup with one monitor and you'd switch it back and forth. Yeah. That's, I think yeah. that's, yeah. that's like no, ex- like people don't realize, I get DMs all the time saying like, I don't, I don't have blah, like this and that. Like a lot of people made it. Man, it, it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't, it does not matter what you use to record yourself. It, people just want to see you. It doesn't, yeah. doesn't matter what your, it doesn't matter what your equipment is. Mm-hmm. And I'm all for getting the nicest stuff yeah. like, off the rip and just going hard. But I think, I think it's important to be cool with not having everything. You know what I'm saying? It's like, even still today, I don't have like the nicest setup, even though it's like, at this point, it's like, it's like, I really should have like a nicer camera and I really should have, you know, these things because the streaming is starting to become like a, you know, a, you know, a real, real job, like a real thing for me. But even now i'm just like i'm I'm just cool with like the bare minimum you know what i'm saying it's like people people should start off with the bare minimum and you know work their way up i guess but i mean you don't have to like it's, you, you can get all like the nicest equipment you just go hard off the rip probably the smartest way to do it but you don't need to do it it's just it's yeah like, you get any webcam you use any phone tiktok's such again tiktok bro yeah it's such a good example it's <laughs> no. such a good example of like you can literally use anything it's like it's like this i will take this one person as an example this one girl, Charlie D'Amelio, <laughs> rose to become one of the single most famous human beings off the planet with her iPhone. Yep. With her iPhone. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? With the camera on her phone, with the programs on her phone. That's it. That's it. Like that's that's you know, that's it. You don't you like you don't need much. Like you really don't. Um and in the gaming world you do need like a little bit more, but you don't need like the best of the best. You don't. You just need to do it. You just need to get on. Well, even Stan, he doesn't post like gameplay on his TikTok. He yeah. just he you don't and he created what he created. Like you guys see it if you're a fan of Stan. Um, that's a prime example of he created an audience without even posting gameplay. So obviously you don't yeah. need need to do that. Exactly, exactly. And 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 I've had conversations with him about this, and I think it's it's awesome what he does. And I think it's so dope that he made the face top 100 too. Yeah. I, just, I especially in like TikTok squad, like I see such a crazy potential. Um. So it's 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 I just I I, I truly think that they could all be like some of the gr- biggest gamers on the planet. You know what I'm saying? So it's like they just need to realize that potential and and kind of grind for it. All right. I'm gonna I'm we're gonna get to. Uh wrapping this up here in a second i just got two more questions real quick yeah um w- so the phase uh fa- phase five is um the recruitment challenge and the phase one uh, top 100 just came out i i want to know kind of for my curiosity how how much of that and and if so how how is it do you guys get to know beforehand or like how is that dished out do you guys get a list oh, or something you're, you're asking you ask me as a member I yeah no I, I had i had no idea who ended up getting picked um hmm. i don't i don't know who knew i assumed that very 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 few people knew at phase who ended up being in the top 100 i know all the bros like k tico like fucking like all the homies and shit like they all had no idea like um i i didn't have any idea either who got picked but we were all like heavily, heavily, heavily a part of um, like sending whoever we thought like deserved to even be in the running yeah. over to the people who were making the decisions, you know what I'm saying? And and especially like Apex and Seabass, they were really good with constantly like hitting us and hitting us back and communicating with us like on the daily, like while we were going through responses heavily or while they were going, well, mm-hmm. while all of us were going through responses, yeah. you know? Mm-hmm. But while they were really nailing down the top 100 um, but i had no idea i had no idea who ended up getting picked i was just as excited the way it was revealed was so fucking dope i can't believe that there were forty thousand people watching it live like that was it, incredible and i was un- i was right un- there yeah bro like he, like that number for like phase as an organization like it's is massive bro like and 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 it's it's the way that they revealed it too like is crazy like it was so hype it was so exciting um 
and I got so happy for all of like the winners. Like it's such a beautiful moment. It's so cool. And I just want to say real quick for anybody out there watching that didn't make it might be a little bit upset. Like it, it's, you know, I was there. I, when I, I made the top 100 and then when I didn't make the top 20, I fucking cried. I was so sad. I, I, was, I, was, I felt like the world was ending around me. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. but, but I was on a good grind and I stayed on that grind and things worked out for me. You know what I'm saying? And that's just what I want to tell you guys. It's like, it's like, you didn't make it and that feeling sucks and nothing I say or anybody says is going to make that feel any better but just know that like if you stay on this grind oh like nothing but good things are going to happen nothing but good things are going to happen um, and and if not this phase five then the next phase five and if not even a phase five maybe a different maybe something else will open like like if it's just hard work always pays off always pays off I think it's super important like you said you just stayed on the grind after the phase five i think after a recruitment challenge for anyone who's going th for a recruitment challenge uh if you don't make it it's almost just at, like your next duty is to keep grinding because that shows just as much you know i mean yeah if and if you don't it just kind of shows like you know that you're i mean i i, I don't even want to say this i'm gonna say what i was about to say i'm just gonna finish the thought but <laughs> I don't fully agree with it either, but I'm just, I was, what I was going to say is I was going to say if you, and if you don't continue grinding, it shows that you're not like truly about it, but I don't, I don't fully agree with that. You know what I'm saying? It's like if, if a lot of people have other things in life to deal with and, and pursuing a career in gaming is not realistically something that, that people can do, you know what I'm saying? It's just not, it's, it's, it's just with, 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 with the size of the gaming community even though we do see people like blow up and make careers out of this it's like you said it's not it's not a lot of people and maybe one day it can be a lot of people but right now it's not and 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 for a lot of people you know it doesn't make sense so if you're not fully on the grind then i ain't gonna put you down for that you know what i'm saying like, mm -hmm. everybody's got shit in their lives everybody's, everybody's got to take care of their shit so it's like i don't fully agree with what i just said but it's like if you do stay on that grind that shows and 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 it will pay off it, it will for for anybody who grinds anybody who's consistent anybody who just puts themselves out there unapologetically um it doesn't even matter what you do as long as you're consistent with it like you're gonna find success with what you do and last question on to the music side of your life how did yeah, totally, bro. How, how did that come about and what what drove you to to do it like how what was the first uh kind of spark of music in in your life hey man i appreciate you asking and you know what nobody's ever really asked this question before so i'm excited to tell the story so basically um in the very beginning when i started like just this whole journey of making content youtube videos whatever i was an editor and I started editing in After Effects and I fell in love with editing. Like all I wanted to do was edit. I just wanted to get better at editing and I wanted to learn every new effect. And I just, I just, that was like my first like big passion after gaming was editing, specifically video editing. And you know, kind of got into YouTube, kind of did my thing, joined FaZe. Um, and I had a homie, a very close homie by the name of Tristan Manfredi. He goes by Tristan Wells, it's his artist name. And he was he was one of my best friends and still is one of my best friends to this day. Um, and he's still one of my best friends to this day. Um, and at the time, he was like just super passionate about creating beats. And me and him were gaming every single day and he would always just be making beats. Like he'd be making beats before game and after game. And like, you know, that's my homie. Like we FaceTime every day, we talk every day. And his passion like just kind of rubbed off on me. Like I just, I just got like interested. I'm like, yo, this is like dope. He's sending me all these cool beats. Like I loved music at the time. Like I was out every new album that dropped, I was listening to, you know what I'm saying? Like I was in it. Yeah. And I was just like, you know, like at the time I was already in a good rhythm and I had some time to, to really get into a new passion. And um, I just wanted to make beats. So anyway, he introduced me to the program at Ableton and he started getting a calls with me. He started teaching me stuff and um, Anyways, so when we were in high school, he ended up getting into a really cool school out in LA called the Icon Academy. And it was like a very, very small chance that he would get into that school. He was applying out of Ohio and he applied and he ended up making it. And it was like super, super dope. 
Um, but he's, I, he wasn't sure if he was able to go financially. So I ended up giving him $10,000 to go to the school. I just, I just gave it to him. Um, and he, like for his first tuition, because he was my homie and because I just thought that was fucking awesome. And he ended up going to that school and he just kept kind of teaching me stuff. And I just like really, really got into making beats and I started making beats on Ableton. And in my free time, I would just be just making beats and just like just for fun with no like, no, again, just passion. Like, mm -hmm. like no real goal or no real, ed, just doing it for fun. And I got into it because it was so, it's so close to editing video. Editing music is so similar to editing video. It's just like its own different world and you just like gotta get into it. And, and anyway, then like one day I was like, I was like making beats and I was like kind of just like courting myself on it. And I was like kind of making my own little songs. Like nobody's ever heard like the first, very first music that I made. Um, but it's kind of just like on my own or any, and on my, on my own beats and stuff. And then I hit up, I started hitting up people like at phase, like I hit up my boy, Eric at phase and I hit up, um, who else did I hit up? I hit up my boy Reza. I hit up just a bunch of people asking them if they knew like rappers or musicians. Like this is when I first moved out to LA. I was like, I was just trying to get into that scene. I was like in the gaming world, but I had no knowledge, no contacts, no connections in any part of the music industry. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, so I was just, I was just trying to get in with any kind, anybody. And I ended up hitting my boy Reza up and he connected me with RSK who he was friends with at the time. Like they were just boys. And he was just like, he Reza told me, he was like, yo, um, this is one of my friends at the time. He's like, yo, I know these guys out in LA. Like they have like this dope house. It's kind of like the phase house, but like musicians, like they just are all producers and they all make music together. And I'm like, oh, that's fucking dope. And he got me connected with them. And then I drove out to them. And literally the very first night that I linked with those dudes with RSK and the producers that he works with, um, Cody and Panda, Mm -hmm. um, who represented Odin Beats. The first night that we linked, we made Woki Masabi. That was like the very first night. That was like the very first time I was in like an actual studio and and we made that song. And the, they produced the beat from scratch, Odin Beats, Cody and Panda, and RSK wrote his verse, he wrote the hook, I wrote my verse. Um, and we did it like all mad naturally, mad organically, right on the spot. Like it was just like the first time we met and it was just good vibes and like we made that song we put it out and it like did mad good like mm -hmm. like even looking back now at the record i'm like blown away like how successful the record it didn't do like some like fucking astronomical shit like you know but of millions yeah of but it did like for a song you know what i'm saying like it did really good and like for rsk and for Odin beats like that was it's still like their most you know played or one of their most played but it's 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 it, for us at the time and like still now it was, it was so dope and that happened so organically and then from there, like that whole experience, like just ignited like a fire in me. And I just started making like mad, just like songs. And I still to this day, like don't really know how to put out music correctly, <laughs> I <Yeah>. guess. <laughs> but I, I just love making it. And ever since then, I've just been constantly making music, even to this day. Like I was just in the studio a couple of days ago, made a new song, like one of my best songs. And I constantly feel like I'm making like even better and better music. And I just, I felt like, I really feel like I found something that I, I don't know. It sounds super fucking dumb, but I just found something that I've always meant to do. Like whether it's putting out and actually pursuing a career in music, I'm thankful that I have a platform and that people even like want to like listen to my stuff. And it's cool that I get to put it out for people. But at the end of the day, I just love making it, bro. I love my music and I listen to it so fucking much. And I love making it so, so, so much. And and I I just love it. I just love what I do, and I'm I'm thankful that I have a lot of free time too. Like like nowadays not as much, but during the time that I I really got into it and really gained all the skills that I have today, um, that I had a lot of free time to really get into and pursue like a new passion like that. Because um, now I have skills and I, like I, I I just love it, bro. Like you can put me in the studio with literally fucking anybody and we'll make a banger. I promise you, bro. Like I promise you. Um, I as a as a true fan of of you and what you do i'm it's very very like it makes me happy to hear you say that you you found something that you love to do and that you're happy to do every single day so i'm glad yeah, and I'm happy I for mean, you it's just, I, I really appreciate you saying that much love to you bro nothing nothing but love from you bro i i i really appreciate you reaching out and, and us talking and, and i hope we talk more in the future as well um but 
but really it's just you know it's just another awesome thing and like i rediscovered gaming this year through call of duty like i rediscovered a passion for call of duty too it's all like it's all you know it's it's just life bro it's finding new passions and 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 getting into them and maybe not getting into them as much and, I, I'm always doing stuff that you love. Someone yeah. on stream asked me today, like, how are you always so positive? And I, I didn't really know how to respond because I really don't know how I fucking am able to. And I'm not always in a good mood. I'm not <laughs> always, like, looking at the, at the bright side of things. But for the most part, I am. Like, I really am. And, and, and I, I'm smart enough to understand that there's not too many people out there who are, who are like me, you know what I'm saying? And, and the way that I ended up answering the question was I was just like, bro, I just – do what I love every day, bro. And I've been doing what I love every day for, for, for as long as I can remember. Like I just, every day I just do what I love. And sometimes, you know, I got to do shit that I don't love, like fucking adult shit or whatever. <laughs> but, but, but at the end of the day, like I'm always enjoying myself. I'm always doing stuff that I love. And I truly feel like that's where like my happiness comes from. I don't know. And I also want to say that I one thing that I truly truly do love your music videos are incredible and I thank you bro thank I love you. I love your music videos um the first one Woki Musabi I I I really enjoyed obviously uh, the Lamborghini um just just a Lamborghini Am I, there was a Lamborghini in there, right? I'm not saying. Yeah, yeah, okay, no, right. okay. I was waiting for you to confirm. Yeah. No, yeah. no I was just listening to you. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah, no I, I, oh, I do videography. I, I love cinematography. I love all that stuff, and and to, I, I really appreciate a good music video that that looks good uh, aesthetically. Yeah, and I, I, I thank you, bro. I love music videos. It's one of my favorite content pieces to put out as a creator. Mm -hmm. and I, I'm really proud of the music videos that I've made and put out. And and you know what? To be honest, bro, like all of the music videos I've made have been super low budget. Like, yeah, I mean, like, you, you filmed in the let's, with let's the love was shot on my phone. That's like a really extreme example. But like the Get Loose music video, like Louis did it like for free, basically, and he just did it like cause he was a homie. That was he, in he the directed. He he directed the video and he edited the video. Um, so all credit goes to him for for making that as awesome as it is. And he basically did it for free. I paid for like you know all of the production fees as far as like you know a, a, a crew and um like you know all the random stuff that mm -hmm. comes with production but he, he did it for the low that was like a low budget too i think i paid like 3500 for that um half of it i paid like 3k for that for the for the homie to do the 3d animation for it um, and Woki Masabi too, like that was the the homie who did it, the, the good vibes music. I forget, I forget the brand that he represents. I should know. But, <laughs> but the homie, the homie who did that, he was not a friend of mine. He was a friend of ours, case, but he did it for for free too. So it's like I I've never really properly gotten to put a music video together with like a big budget. And I hope I, you know, it's one of my goals. You know, it's one of my dreams, like mm -hmm. to, to 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 have that budget to whether it's with a label or independent to be able to be cool to put like fifty thousand dollars into a music video and for that to be okay and for that to make sense because i could make a fucking awesome music video with fifty thousand dollars so it's like yeah it's, i appreciate you saying that and i i look forward to making really really cool music videos okay a last quick fire question then we'll wrap this up who who's the who's your dream guest feature who do you think you would work well with Man, like Logic, for example, would be fucking. I mean, oh, oh be, man, I probably, that would probably be the craziest. But like someone that I really listen to and that I like, his art that I really admire and that I think would be just like a such a fucking cool feature because I know we would make such a cool song. Uh, Don Tolliver. Oh shit! Yeah. I. I, I you know that is, yeah, no, I do, I do. I I found out through he Travis broke, Scott. Yeah. To me, out of all of like the new artists in the past like five years, yeah, the dopest sound. Yeah, he, he very sound. unique, and he just he's really good. He's really really good. He's so good. Every new song that I hear from him, every new leak that I hear from him, it's some new shit, and it's some fucking really unique, dope flows. And he always sings. He always he has this dope voice, and like he's 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 dope. I would love to. I would love the song. But yeah. you know, I work with anybody, bro. I, I, I literally work with anybody, and and there is a I could I could say for days talking about people that I would love to work. With. But that's just one of, of of many. You know what I'm saying? 
Yeah. All right. Well, we appreciate you coming on the podcast. This has been absolutely a dream come true. In 2016, I, d- I wanted to push this in here really quick. I got my my two gifts for Christmas were your like phase jersey shirt. I said Blaziken on the back, and your um, your fire B logo shirt. Um, so I got those two for Christmas, and that was one of my all time favorite gifts ever. So it's crazy to sit here I, and I lowkey I lowkey wish I was recording this video because every time you gas me up in this video, I just smile. I just smile. <laughs> Dude, you really... if you see any clips of this, you're just gonna see me smiling so hard because this is <laughs> absolutely crazy. Um, yeah, you guys, I, I I need you. If you got to the end of this video, if you guys haven't already, uh, go stream uh, for the team on Spotify and is it on Apple Music as well? Yeah, yeah, it's on. Yeah, it's on Apple Music too. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, I'm not really given like a crazy shout out, but I, 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 th- no, bro, I, I felt like it's it a very good song, T Grizzly and and Blaze killed it. Yeah, and it's, it's super that dope. was it's, super it's, super it's, dope. It's, it's a cool song, but I've been working on like some new like shit, mm-hmm. and it's like it's different from from what I've been been making and been putting out, and um, I'm, I don't know, I'm truly excited. I feel like. I feel like this for a song for the team like is the beginning of like a really cool journey and like I've been working for a long time to get to like just just been making songs and I have like a lot of songs bro. I have a lot of songs and I really just after putting out this song I just want to constantly put out songs like I just want to be putting them out like hell off like honestly I would love to be able to put out like a song a week yeah that would be cool like do the take the Russ approach Mm -hmm. but I, I just I don't know I, I again I haven't properly figured out like how to really drop music yet yeah so we could I honestly I could sit for, for like, <laughs> a year and talk with you about, about this, but I'm just gonna go off and say this but like bro music marketing is so like interesting bro it's so interesting like it's it's yeah I mean the way it, you put out songs and the timing like has such a big impact on it wait I I'm guessing it's nothing like me dropping a YouTube video <laughs> like. Do you do you have to go through people like you yourself? I mean, you don't. No, it's not like that. It's not like that. I'm honestly playing it up to be much bigger than it is. But it's like if you if you just do it right, like the music can just go crazy. Um, so it's. Yeah. Well, I, I mean. Anyway, yeah. Whatever. Uh, it's not, I'm not gonna grasp the concept <laughs> even if we try. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So what I was saying, I appreciate it so so, so much. Like this is yeah, absolutely yeah. a dream come true. I just went and and right be- when you DM me back, I told my mom that I was doing this. Like, I I I can't. I've talked about you so much, and I'm glad to see you doing well on TikTok. And I love yeah. watching your streams. Um, I'm glad that you found Warzone and and playing Call of Duty again. It gives me nostalgic vibes, and and I really appreciate that. Um. Dude, thank you, man. I, 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 I truly love the support, and, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm humbled by this whole conversation that we've had, bro. Thank you. Oh, no, thank you. I, 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 I don't, I'm at a loss for words, honestly. Um, yeah, this, I, if, Dude, go ahead. I was, I was just going to say, listen, nothing but good vibes. I look forward to talking with you again soon. Um, we'll, we might set up a follow-up podcast let's let's give it some time but let's 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 please let's talk um dude enjoy your night and yeah dude thank you for having me on yeah i hope you guys enjoyed the podcast this has been the for you podcast um yes, follow- guys, yes. subscribe to your boy subscribe <laughs> no, I, I ain't talking about me I, I'm, I'm literally talking about texture like literally just sub the homie like uh, the shout of this video all right man i, I i'm starstruck that you said my name so um yeah this has been the podcast uh i hope to see you guys next week um this has been a dream come true thank you for blaze for coming on the podcast and i'll see you guys later peace peace